Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well this Thursday morning. It's super good to have you. And as always, we're waiting for people to jump on because I think the insecurity of the people like me that do this until we see people jump on, we don't feel really good about ourselves. So I'm just drinking coffee. Where my Toledo shirt saying good morning and waiting. Allie, you're first on, or at least first on my screen. Hope you're doing well, Allie. Hope it's good out on the farm. Um, hey, quick question, if you can respond to this. Are you guys in the fields yet? Are you waiting? Karen, you're, are you guys in the fields? It's a great question for the farmers out there. Ashley, good to see you. Rob, good to see you. Bobby, good to see you. Um, Ashley and Rob have been around our ministry, what we've been doing um, at Lifehouse and before Lifehouse at Life Forever. Juliana, good to see you. Um, Kayla, good to see you. And Dunn, good morning, Matt. Good morning to you, Ann and Dawn. I'll just go back to Ashley for a minute. Ashley is one of the people that makes me laugh more than anybody else and embarrasses me at the same time. So, cheers to you this morning, Ashley. Jill, good to see you. Hope the golf game's going well. I played yesterday just a little bit, just a little bit. Lisa, good to see you. Hey, so last night, um, it was my job to make dinner. Becky, good morning for our family. And I made um, pork tenderloin and Sunday potatoes on the grill. So I made them both in a cast iron crock. I don't want to tell you this because I just like to talk about stuff while people are jumping on. And Meg says, Dad, throw a whole stick of butter in the eight chopped up potatoes I put on the grill in this cast iron pan. So I threw the whole stick of butter in, a little bit of salt, and then I tried the McDonald's trip, trick of a little bit of sugar in with the salt on the potatoes. Oh my gosh, it was so good. And my weight continues to go up. My issue, not yours. Anyway, good morning, guys. There's a little piece of information you did not know, need to know. Hey, um, so before I jump into what we're talking about today, I want to remind you that this weekend we're continuing our series, Climate Change, um, and we are talking about what I think is one of the most difficult for th things for people to do relationally with one another, you know, our spouses, our kids, our family. Um, you have to check it out because I think it's going to be a great tool in your toolbox, so keep an eye out for that. Um, we're about to jump into this devotional, and I have been thinking about how long we've been doing this. Um, is it six weeks? I don't know if it's seven weeks. I'm not even sure anymore. Um, but I so appreciate the time you all are spending, you know, with me, obviously, and each other, but also with God. We've been talking about creating this habit. And time is such a valuable thing because it takes time to develop any relationship. It takes time to develop, a, you know, trust with a spouse or a boyfriend or girlfriend, a child. It just takes time. And I just want to remind you that this time you're taking in the morning is creating a relationship with God that maybe you didn't know was possible, and it pays off in the end. So just kudos to you for being around here. And if you're jumping on for the first time today, I'm so glad that you spent the morning with us. Um, so here's what we're talking about. We're talking about anxiety, and we're following this um, YouVersion app. Now, YouVersion is this. You can upside down for you, but YouVersion is a Bible app. YouVersion.com, the YouVersion app on your phone. And we're talking about the seven things the Bible says about anxiety. I super encourage you to download that on um, any of your devices and follow along because you don't want to just rely on me to lead you in your time with God. I'm just hopefully here for a spark plug. But we're talking about anxiety. And the idea in the devotion when you read it is, you know, anxiety often rises up around things that we cannot predict or things we cannot control. And you guys know this. There's things right now that we cannot predict. And obviously, it's maybe in your normal everyday life and relationships and your family, your job. But we're also in the middle of this time where we don't know when things are going to end or happen or what's going to happen in a year with our economy. I mean, there's all these different things. And people react to this so differently. I mean, you see people right now that are willing to take whatever the government tells us to do safety-wise and go to the 10th degree. Or people are like, I'm not doing any of it. I'm freaking out on either end because there's anxiety and we're just not sure what's true and what's not true. Well, what if we found peace in the middle of that? For us, just quickly, um, we are feeling that a little bit because in three weeks, we were supposed to have a wedding for my our youngest son, Josh. They were supposed to get married and they were going to have a 300-person wedding, big time deal. Then it, because of all that's going on, you know, went down to an 80-person wedding and now it looks like it's going to be a 10 to 20-person wedding. And for these young kids, they're, you know, they're nervous. They don't know how that's going to work. It's not the wedding of their dreams. And for us, now we're going from having the wedding at church to our backyard, which means I've got to get the weeds killed before the wedding happens. So i got a big job ahead of me. But it's the unknown that creates anxiety in us. It's not knowing you know, in three more weeks what are things going to look like. 
And that's where we can get wrapped up in all of the emotions of it. And so whatever your unknown is, I'm guessing it's causing you anxiety and it's causing you stress. And, you know, those deadlines, it's the things you don't know, what's the boss going to say to me next. It can overflow. Now, here's my question. In light of all that, and that's a lot, I know. What if God has hope stored up for you? Like he has a resource or a vault of hope for you. In Romans chapter 15, verse 13, we'll read the whole verse in a second. The Apostle Paul prays a prayer for the Christians in Rome who faced incredible anxiety because they never knew if they were going to live from day to day. And Paul mentions the God of hope. Now you got to catch that. The God of hope. That the very nature of God is hope. Hope is one of the things that God is. It's not just what he gives, it's what he is. And Paul begins to speak about that they would exchange their stress and anxiety with joy and peace. And be truly filled with joy and peace. Now, this is what we know about God. At least I believe this. you got to decide what you believe. That God's going to just open the pipeline of joy and peace to flow into those Romans in the middle of that situation of you know, Rome wanting to kill them and persecute them and take their life and torture them. All that terrible stuff he's to be really stressed about. And he's got because he just poured in so much hope and peace that the anxiety would have went, went away. But Paul also knew that if they didn't change their mindset and how they saw the world and saw God, anxiety would just creep back in. Because that's what happens. We, we have moments of joy, moments of peace, moments of hope. But it wanes. Um, one of the things I tell our team all the time is that vision leaks, vision leaks. So keep you know, talking about the vision of our church and vision of your ministry. Well, hope leaks and peace leaks and joy leaks if we don't change our mindset and are transformed in our minds. So, you know, so God talks or leads them into this. Um, the other thing we know is that even if they had all the peace and trust in the world, that if they didn't learn to trust God with that, even that couldn't keep anxiety at bay. So trust becomes the, the, the cornerstone of what Paul talks about to these people, that their lives are in so much danger. And the way to push anxiety out and let hope and peace come into your life is trust. Now here's the important thing about trust. Trust is not a magic bullet. Trust takes time. Trust takes intentionality. My kids did not learn to jump off the side of the pool into my arms and with confidence until we did it time and time again when they were little. And see, that's, that's your heavenly father. He just said, listen, I'm here and my hands are wide open. you got to jump into my arms and I'm going to catch you. And as you learn to trust me time and time again, hope and peace will come into that. See, this is not just lip service. And sometimes in the church we just throw out things like, hey, have peace, have hope, have trust. And, and they're cheap. And that's why they feel cheap sometimes. But consistency in a relationship gives us confidence in it. Now, here's the challenge with that, though. To get that going, you got to take a chance. you got to risk. you really got to take a deep breath and say, Heavenly Father, today I'm going to risk and I'm going to put my full trust in you. I am freaking out about whatever's coming in the next days, weeks, and months. I am terrified, full of anxiety, but I'm going to choose to trust you in the middle of this. And here's what I have found and many, many people over the years have found, like millions of people, that God is always there to catch us. Maybe not in the way we think he should or how we thought he would, but in the, in the end we look back and we see him catching us in the middle of that. Now go back to Paul's prayer for these um, Christians in Rome. The context of this prayer is that he tells them about God of the old, God in the Old Testament, God as it relates to the, the Jewish people promising a Savior, and then promising a Savior to the Gentiles and non-Jewish people. And the promise was this, a Savior is coming, a Savior is coming, a Savior is coming. And they waited a long time. And some days the Israelites woke up and they, they wondered, where is the Savior? Is this ever going to happen? And then Jesus shows up. And all of hope and all of peace and all of joy and all of trust shows up in the person of Jesus. And all of God is in Jesus. Jesus gives his life for you, and he gives his life for me, and then he rises from the dead. It's amazing. And Paul says, that is a reason for your hope. In other words, if God never did another thing for you, besides give his son to fully die for your sins and rise from the dead, it would be all you need. But that's not all God's done for you, or will do for you, because he loves you, and he's in the middle of what is going on in your life.
So the context is, God promised a Savior to the Israelites thousands and thousands of years ago. And Jesus showed up and he saved the world. And this is what Paul prays, Romans 15, 13. I hope you read it today. I pray that the God, the source of hope, the source of your hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the three things I want to ask, and I'm just going to read this prayer as our prayer today, is when it comes to joy, what do you need joy to replace in your life today? What has gotten the best of you? Like for our kids, the wedding is coming up, and it's a nervous time, and how's it all going to work out? So for me, trying to figure my end of it out, today I'm going to ask God, would you replace my anxiousness over this wedding with joy? Where do you need peace? And maybe for you, it's just for you to ask for peace. God, I need peace today in the middle of the craziness. And then where does trust come in? And maybe for you, it is just a leap, a chance, a risk. It's sucking up enough courage to take a step in a trust relationship with a God who absolutely loves you. And you can know that because he gave his son for you. So I'm praying that over you. And I'm praying wherever you need peace and joy and trust, you would find it. So let's pray together. And I'm just going to simply read this really amazing prayer that's already written out by the Apostle Paul. And then we'll close for the day. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that God, the source of hope, will completely fill everybody that's jumping on today. That you fill us with joy, and you fill us with peace, and you'll fill us with real trust in you, Jesus. Then, Jesus, you'll overflow, and we'll overflow with confident hope through the power of your Spirit that lives in us. And thank you, Jesus, that this is a relationship, and it takes time, it takes intentionality, but you initiated it all, and you made a way for it all to happen. Thanks for loving us, and thank you for loving everybody online. We just pray for more joy, peace, and ultimately trust in you. It's in your name I pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Hope it's going well. We'll talk to you soon. We'll see you Sunday, if not before, for climate change. Tune in and invite somebody. Later.